captain of the Bob Barker, Mr. Peter Hammerstead. So pe- welcome, Peter. Hello. Hey, thank you so much for having me on the show. Hi, Peter. Welcome. Thank you very much for joining us. Obviously, we're going to be talking to you about Wild Wars, Chasing the Thunder and uh, Sea Shepherd in general. But before we do that, Peter, and for those that have been like living in the dark ages, don't know who you are or who Sea Shepherd are, maybe you could tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got into it, Sea Shepherd. So Sea Shepherd is an international marine conservation organization that exists to uphold international conservation law, to work with developing island and coastal states to stop illegal, unreported and unregulated fishing, to defend critical marine habitats. We're not a protest organization, we're a, a law enforcement organization. Essentially, there are a lot of laws in place that we need to protect the oceans, but what's missing is for somebody to enforce those laws. And where that law enforcement vacuum exists, Sea Shepherd tries to fill it. Um, I joined Sea Shepherd when I was 18 years old. That was 17 years ago. I was 14 years old when I saw a picture of a dead Mickey whale being pulled up the slipway of an 8,000 ton factory whaling ship down in the Antarctic. And that image just shocked me to the core. I just could not believe that whaling was still happening in our day and age. I thought that whaling was something that ended with the Save the Whales movement in the 70s and 80s. And to, to, to discover that not only was it still going on, but it was happening in one of the most pristine marine environments in the world, the Antarctic, uh, just shocked me to the core. So as soon as I was old enough to submit an application, I, I applied to join Sea Shepherd, and it's what I've been doing ever since, sailing the seven seas to defend marine wildlife. Wow. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, so you have spent your whole life protecting the ocean. I've spent the whole my I've spent my whole adult life uh, yeah. protecting the oceans. I, I started down in the engine room of a ship that we no longer have, an old vessel called the Farley Moat. I started as an oiler on board. My first five and a half months on a Sea Shepherd ship uh, entailed cleaning fuel tanks. I'd, I'd been in every single fuel tank on board that ship, uh, bucketing out diesel sludge and getting them pristine and and even as I was just ankle deep in diesel sludge, I felt like the luckiest person in the world <laughs> to be contributing in, in a small way towards getting this ship out to sea. Because the reality is that on the front lines of marine conservation, in many ways, we're the only sheriff in town. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, so you've gone from in the engine room all the way up now. So you've gone second mate, first mate, captain, you're now uh, director of campaigns. When you join Sea Shepherd, I don't suppose you could have ever imagined getting to this point uh, as a, and having it as a all of your adult life. When I joined Sea Shepherd, I felt so lucky to have a small part to play in a growing movement to defend marine wildlife, to, to be given the responsibility of a ship, to be given the responsibility of, of developing and leading campaigns that are defending marine wildlife. I mean, it's a dream come true. I, I feel like the luckiest person in the world every single morning when I wake up, knowing that I get to live my passion and I get to fight for the values that I believe in and that I get to go to bed at the end of the day and look back on what we've achieved and, and realize that countless marine creatures are swimming free because passionate and compassionate people like you and, and I uh, decided to to get involved. That, that, that must just be so fulfilling to be able to make a statement like that. Well, when we were chasing Japanese whaling ships down in the Antarctic, every day that we shut the whalers down was 20 whales saved. A, a campaign could save 600, 700, 800 whales, whales that are swimming free in the Southern Ocean right here, right now, because we intervene. And so that's something very concrete. There's a lot of marine conservation organizations out there, but there's various ways to measure success. And, and we have a very... A uh, unique way of measuring success. We, we don't measure our success by our membership base. We have a small but very passionate membership base. We don't measure our success by the number of glossy reports we put out every year. We don't put out any. We measure our success by the number of criminal operations that we shut down. African coastal states, uh, when we assist African coastal states to arrest an illegal trawler, then every day that trawler is detained in port is countless lives saved and it's marine wildlife returning to an area that's been been heavily overfished. Well, you, you, you just said there, so 20 whales a day. I mean, that's a lot, isn't it? We, in our first ever podcast that we did, episode one, we spoke about the numbers of humpback 
at Wales and Blue Wales returning to almost pre-whaling numbers since the um, International Whaling Commission and you guys, well, you guys have played a, a massive part in that. So again, you, you must feel so fulfilled and proud of what you've achieved as an organisation, as an individual. Well, back in the 1980s, so close were we to losing the great whales that the International Whaling Commission put in place this global moratorium on commercial whaling. And yet certain countries like Japan, Iceland and Norway, in that time since then, they've together killed over 40,000 whales. So for us, we've never, we don't want laws and policies and procedures to just be paper tigers. We, we give these laws and policies the bite that they deserve. And that's and, why and need we, as well that you know they, the bite that they actually need those laws. That's right. We we chased the Japanese whaling fleet for nine years down in the Antarctic before the International Court of Justice, the highest court in the world, uh, ruled that what they were doing was in fact illegal because it was commercial whaling. It wasn't scientific whaling, which was what they claimed as their loophole to the moratorium. Mm. Well, that leads on nicely to whale wars, really, doesn't it? And um, the, the time that you spent down there, did it start 2007, 2008 season, wasn't it? We actually had a campaign down in the Antarctic in 2002, 2003, and, and then it would take some years before we would return. We did all in all 10 Antarctic whale defense campaigns, and Whale Wars was on board for, for seven of them. How, how did that actually come about, Peter? What what made that happen? Uh, just a call from a TV company or, or something Sea Shepherd promoted? 